Hello and welcome to race three, round four of the core car selection series. We're here at Eiger Nordwand in the Swiss Alps and we're looking forward to the conclusion of this weekend. We have got Heike Mikey leading the field away now uh, and behind him is Future F1 after a staggering performance from the newcomer RCB last night to get the INF KTM up onto the <coughs> onto the front row here with Heike Mikey. Uh, who himself had a storming race last night coming from 7th position to 1st and uh, we'll be seeing the exciting conclusion of today's race we've had some interesting strategies, interesting crashes, interesting action all weekend and it's going to be really interesting to see how these, uh, these final drivers do this weekend uh, unfortunately it's just me in the commentary box tonight um, so I shall be trying not to um, have too many pauses where there should be someone else there. But um, we're looking forward to seeing this. It's a uh, one hour and 30 minute long race. We're currently on the pace lap and we should be ready to go really shortly. So I shall run us through the runners today. We've got Pikey Mikey for Made for Racing in first. Future F1 for Inferno Racing 2nd, 3rd place is Mento89 in the Concrete Climax Racing NSX, alongside the other NSX of GT Old Boy um, in the in, for Poland 24, back in 5th position by 117, in 6th position R Clark 83 as we're coming over the line now, and Pokemaker goes green early, he's got the... Uh, He's got the jump on the rest of the field. Mento tonight's got the jump on future F1 as we see another aerial overtake thanks to the jump. And oh, there's contact early on there. I think there might be between the two drivers and they might have just about got away with that actually. But we'll see as we come through some fighting there from Mento89 trying to take the fight early to Pikey Mikey. Not let the uh, the other British driver get away. And uh, we're going to be seeing some tough action there from Mento89. He's been setting some good pace in practice. Uh, and it'll be interesting if you can chase down the charging uh, Pikey Mikey in the Hateful Racing Master MX-5, a car which has pretty much dominated the series so far, but after a bad performance from GTP Kane, they've been on the back foot all weekend and they need some luck to get up towards the front, or even the podium overall. And so now coming out of the, the tunnel for the first time on board the Future F1 in that KTM, you can see that lovely bit of suspension action there from the front uh, spring uh, springs as we come through one of the most difficult parts of the track. Uh, remember all the cars will be on slightly cold tyres at this point, all the drivers a little bit nervy, you know, adrenaline pumping as we come over the jump. We're now back on board with Pike and Mikey, our race leader. And uh, at the back we have Bichu in the other KTM, who the T the, the team morphine racing team have kind of been a little bit quiet in the uh, all season in that KTM, they just haven't seemed to gel with it so much. It seems maybe they haven't got enough practice in or something. As a uh, you know, on board of our Clark, who's had some absolute staggering pace early on uh, in the practice sessions, though because of Glenn um, uh well, there, there being no uh, Reaper Racing driver early on uh, uh, last night, um, they start near the back this time. And uh, we're now on board with Play 117 and the other Lotus Elise. The Elises have looked very quick in all this weekend, actually. Uh, the, the tour Lotus having a bit of a better showing this weekend in the hands of Cobra. Actually had a bit of a bad run last night. I think a little bit of a bad luck uh, cursed that car. But as you can see, Play is all over the back of GT, uh, PL Old Boy, who's again just kind of bringing that car home for P24, they're in the third position at the moment and uh, uh, they need some luck to get up into second or first and, uh, uh, the, uh, the, that Lotus is right behind them, Clay and our clock are both in uh, under one of the twos for the only cars to do so in practice the, uh, the driver's running tonight but as you can see in second place now is Future F1, so obviously Mentor is made a mistake, we missed that on camera unfortunately, we've just seen it on the driver tracker. But you can see the white on the has dropped back behind the KTM. So, uh, oh, and we have contact with our club and, uh, and uh, Tours, uh, uh, Play 117, that's a big bit of contact there, it looked like uh, our club's trying to go around the outside and uh, just got caught out by the, uh, the understeer in the uh, other Lotus. So we'll be seeing if the car has damage, but that was definitely not a uh, a clean move there for the for the Scottish Scottish driver there. And uh, Play is now back down into sixth position and really being you know hounded by Bichu. I think there's damage on both those cars. Oh, big crash! We've got a big moment there for our Clark, who's 
failing to the pit lane early. So there you go, that, that, that accident definitely uh, caused damage for the Lotus, and he's going to lose almost a lap now on the rest of the field because of this extremely long pit lane we've been talking about all weekend. And uh, yeah, there's definitely damage on the other Lotus as well because, you know, Bichu wasn't running that closely with them beforehand. Um, so I think that Lotus has got damaged. The KTM, you know, sensing sensing his, uh, his prey is a little bit um, weakened at this point. But um, he's actually dropped off a little bit. Of course, the KTM isn't very strong in a, uh, in a straight line. We're now back aboard with GTP, our old boy, who's kind of sticking with the Memto 89. Memto 89 kind of dropped back and is dropping back from Future F1. So he's obviously made a mistake. And possibly he's got damage himself now. Oh, that was very wide there for old boy, almost clipping uh, the, the top of the white line into the gravel. As we're, uh, first, this is the beginning of lap six, already, well, oh, lap five, sorry, of, uh, of racing. Uh, already on to lap five of the race. Uh, it, it takes a minute and, well, just over a minute to get around a lap of this very tight, twisty, Iger track as we're on board now with Pikey Mikey who is a lap ahead of our club. You see he's lost that entire lap now because of that one rash move and he's going to have to work even harder to get himself a decent result today. He's now dead last and he's going to do some real work to try and uh, get back past but of course you know he's lost that lap early and he recovered from it. He's going to need some searing pace over the next hour and 20 minutes but we'll be keeping an eye on him seeing if he can uh, make his way back up through the order but at the moment it's Pikey Mikey doing exactly what he set out to do which is just pull away from the rest of the field you know, he knows he's got to make up a slightly impossible number of laps to win this race you know, he's got to pull four laps on everyone in the field pretty much or, or, or in, at least in the top, the top four cars he needs to pull four laps on them to take the victory today which uh, you know, it's not really possible. It's three laps to get to third, which would beat the uh, the P24 car, but it would need four laps to get past CCR and INF. Um, everyone below that is actually passed already in terms of overall pay, uh, overall time, um, as as these races are split up into three segments, and then the times are added together for the weekend. So uh, if you have a bad run and run one in the first race, then it is possible to. Uh, to uh, fix that, but uh, it does take some, some luck and some incredibly good driving to get yourself back into contention. So we're back on board now with Memento 89, had a bit of a, had a very fast start, but um, he does seem to have uh, dropped back a little bit from the KTM, Future F1 showing some pace, and ever since they got that KTM kind of dialed in, it's been just really, really consistent, they've been getting quicker and quicker, and uh, I think the... Um, they're looking good, the, uh, the the American squad there for at least a second place, if not a, if not possibly going for the win. You know, they've only got to pull a little bit ahead of Mento 89, and then they should probably take that win. It all depends on strategy. We're probably going to have two different strategies here. We have a two stop or a one stop. It all depends on the drivers how they feel they can manage their tyres. And a future F1 there coming through my favourite corner on the tyre track, which is that long bottom hairpin. You've got to be so, it's a real test on, on driver patience and car's lateral grip. You know, you want to get on that power as early as possible, but, uh, you know, you've got to be patient enough to know the car can do it. Because always, you know, as Jackie Stewart once said, once you're on full power, you never want to take your foot back off it. You know, that's just wasting time. And as we see, Future from cutting that, that dirt, you know, fairly aggressively. Through that final corner as we go back over the jump of course these cars aren't really designed to jump that far but uh thanks to the Gran Turismo physics we can get away with that um there's no damage sustained for that but it does a uh, does a little, little look a little curious I will admit down through the final uh, the section we're back on board with our clerk who's closing down on Pikey Mike now Pikey Mikey has a bit of a, uh, a choice to make here because uh, he is a lap up on the fast charging R Clark. So, from a, uh, a point of view of who's in this race, Mikey doesn't have to let him through. But at the same time, if he tries and holds him up, you know, R Clark might get frustrated and, uh, and Clark might actually have a, uh, a crash with him. So, uh, it would probably be advisable for Mikey to. Uh, 
not to not kind of stay uh, too aggressive at this point. I mean, we saw a lot of issues in race two to do with this issue, uh, this 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 point here, which was cars coming back through the field, uh, being too aggressive on the uh, the leading cars, uh, and and actually kind of affecting the race result a little bit. And we had quite a aggressive back markers when it was the other way around when we had cars to try and lap others um, you know, those trying to unlap themselves were very aggressive and actually you know there may be some slaps in the wrists from the, uh, from the, from the stewards after this race it's just reminding everyone you know you're not in this race you know you're not on that lap you're not really in this race you know you've got to you've got to hold your line a little bit not quite you know fight so much you know all the drivers want to have as much of a race as possible. But, uh, you know, if you if you're falling down the order, then you know you've lost some, a little bit of your uh, right to race as such. Or at least those drivers. You know, you've got to kind of pull yourself back through. If you're on board now, Vaftar is really on the back of the uh, Piper Monkey. You know, it's only a matter of time really to Clark like, can make the effective move. And, and if I was being Mikey, I would let him through at this point. It's significant because Mike has the lead, and uh, you know Mike is probably trying to do what he did last night, a one-stop strategy. So this could probably be bad for his tyres. But then again, having a, a very fast car behind you can help you push on a little bit. And um, you know, it's like having a, a, a rocket behind you, and um, you know you don't want it through. You're going to push a little bit harder, try and go a bit faster, but. Uh, Mike's got to be very careful that he doesn't overdo it and put himself in the hedge. He was uh, uh, reported to be fuming with himself after the mistake made last night, uh, uh, which caused him to have to take another pit stop because that effectively lost him a lap on the field and could have really, you know, helped him today because it would have made it a little bit easier to get onto the podium. Uh, yeah, he's now got more work to do because of that. Carl Clark is a. Uh, you know, setting the pace at the moment, but of course that early mistake has cost him. He's, you know, he's electrifying pace at the moment. You know, no one else I can see is down in, in the low minute uh, twos. Um, but, you know, if he's... Oh, a big slide there from 89. As we see there, you know, the back on board of Old Boy has kind of stayed with him. They've all closed back up to feature F1, so maybe the KTM at this point of the skin isn't so good on its time. Of course, all the cars wear their tyres like different, and within that, all the teams with the same car, their car, really, because they're set up all individually, we all just wear their tyres in different, different driving styles and fit different tyres more so. And, uh, you know, Future F1 might have pushed his tyres a little bit too hard early on and now paying the price of that. It's quite the fact that KTM has been reasonably good on its tyres throughout the season. Now, Mem 89 now really closing up the back of one of the issues with the KTM is it's got a very low top speed. Uh, well, um, it, it doesn't seem to go very well in a straight line. Uh, it, it struggles to pick up speed. And, uh, I'm not quite sure why, but Manto is now going for a move down the inside. Contact with him. Uh, contact there. Uh, was there damage affected to either car? The back end of the ISX was stepped out for a moment and caught the front. The front right there, a future F1. So we'll have to see if there's damage uh, on Manto 89's car, but this could have real repercussions but oh and future one gets a big wiggle out of that corner that's going to set uh, old boy up for a run into the into the, the the bottom of the hill he's going to go around the outside of the ktm can he make a stick now if he, he rolls back in behind but i think memto 89 might have caused himself some damage there i don't know if it's enough to pit but it definitely looked like the car was wiggling a bit. And again, oh boy, going down the inside. That was a very bold move. Did that have contact as well? This is side-by-side -side racing in a part of the track, which is one by one. This is incredible to watch. And that's definitely contact. Big contact there. Future F1 in the top of the wall. Oh boy, that was, you know, too aggressive there, in my opinion. That was a very aggressive move from the Polish driver. And uh, we we'll have to see. But Future F1 definitely going to the pit. Old boy going to the pit. As you spin there for old boy onto the pit lane. Now, will he get pit service there? There's a there's there's a known bug in the game where if you if you crash on the way into the pit lane and the game has to reset your car, then quite often you won't get to pit and have pit service. So he might have to trundle all the way through the pit lane before he gets uh, uh, and then go all the way back round and uh, uh, and go. Um, 
and go back into the pit lane. As we see Arpa all over the back of him, uh, we'll have to see if Old Boy got any pit service. If he comes out, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. No, it does seem he's getting pit, pit service, so, you know, he doesn't lose another minute, but that's definitely one lap down. Of course, what we need to bear in mind is Piking Mikey is trying to get the, the M4R car back on the podium. Now, to do that, he needs to close down three laps in Old Boy. This is basically giving him one free lap now. So this is kind of our, our, our kind of lap differential between for the for the, po the bottom step of the podium. Mem 289 now really has got a really good chance of securing the win for CCR as long as he now keeps his head clean and uh, cool. The future F1 dropping down because of the damage, which we saw earlier, he had to pit. That is really a Mem 289 to take the first win for CCR in this in this CCS championship. So um, that's that's great news for the, the Concrete Climax racing driver. Uh, our, our defending champions from the N24 have been a uh, have been a little um, uh, unlucky, I would say, over the over the series. Mem 289 had a few disconnections uh, throughout the series, and. Um, that's cost that cost them the overall victory last time out at uh, Apricot Hill, and um, you know if they can take the victory here at a track where you know it's all a bit um, I don't know uh, a bit a bit uh, uh, unknown, then that's going to show real you know uh, uh, consistency and, and intelligent driving there from the, uh, the team boss of the Concrete Climax, but all of their team has driven exactly what they needed to be. But, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Mikey is still being hounded by the uh, the Lotus behind him, which is only going to drive him on further. He's done a, a 102.193, which is a fairly good lap time as his best lap. I mean, it's nowhere near as fast as our club. He's been two tenths quicker and was quicker still in practice uh, on a similar fuel load. So, um, you know, we've seen some great pace there from the... Uh, from the Lotus, it's just such a shame that he made that early mistake where he was a little too aggressive, a little too enthusiastic to get past the other Lotus, he's dropped down. So we're there, old boy now dropping to the back, future just in front of him. I mean, uh, we'll have to wait for the steward's, opinion, uh, the steward's um, verdict on that incident, but my opinion would be old boy was trying to make the overtake. Maybe he was a bit aggressive, you know. Seem to slide up the track into future F1's path. You know, he had the inside lung, yes, but it doesn't give him the right to push the other car off the track. So um, we'll see what happens. We'll have to see another view of it at some point. Um, we'll see. Oh, was that our clock in the wall? Or was that a little bit of lag there? Because he's only dropped a long way back. I'm not sure if he hit the inside wall. That that looked um, s suspiciously like a contact with the wall there. Um, and you can see Future F1 isn't far behind him, I don't believe. I believe that's Future F1 just behind him. There might be Bitchu, actually. I'm not 100%. Um, we don't actually have the, the sign-up on him right now. So that is Future F1, I'm just being told over the uh, uh, in my ear. So that means Future F1's not far behind Clark. So if, he, if Clark has to pit again, or has now got damage, then that could bring Future back into this a little bit. I mean, he's not going to be you know, fighting for the win so much around here, because as soon as you pit for damage, you're really in a bad way for being able to win. You, know, you need everybody else to have had to pit, or just be slow. But Future, you know, he could still salvage possibly fourth position from this. Um, we're definitely seeing a, a, a turn in fortune for a couple of the drivers tonight. The, uh, the yeah, the, 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 there's been some feisty contacts again, and there'll be some some strong words probably being said um, in the in the stewards' verdict. But like I said earlier, the biggest winner so far is uh, is Mem 29 for CCR. They've really got a break here because they haven't had to pit again. They're kind of ignoring the fact that Pilot Mikey's out front because he's got such a big gap to. Uh, to have to try and to, to surmount, it would require pretty much Mem 29 deciding that the uh, the barriers were where his NSX needed to be, not the tarmac, uh, or unfortunately a, a disconnection for the uh, for the driver that would probably put pain to their their winning so far. But 
So far it's looking good there for CCR to get their, their maiden victory of the of the, of the season overall, that is. They've had, a, uh, I think, one or two wins so far in previous rounds. But uh, yes, that would be good to see a different, a change in winner, let's say, for the uh, CSS. Because so far it's been all m 4 rs way. And uh, the Hastings-based team in, from England are probably very happy with their run so far. But uh, the Coventry-based squad, probably pleased to be able to take in some of the silverware back their way. We're now back on board with Mikey, who we can see has finally let Clark through. So those tyres on the front, uh, probably the front left of Mike's car, are now suffering to a degree where he's had to let Clarky through. He's now got Future right behind him. So again, you'd expect uh, uh, Mike to be letting this car through at some point. Now he knows his tyres are worn. Now he isn't going to have the pace of four. So the smart choice would be to just let him through in a safe area. Or if the guy goes, the other guy goes through, overtakes them through. Here we go. This should be enough. You know, let let out the power there from Mike. You know, lets the KTM through. Didn't really lose too much time. A smart choice there, though. It doesn't look like it's actually coming back at him a little because of the slow speed of the uh, the KTM in a straight line. Um, the, the the Mazda has pretty good legs on it for a little little tiny roadster. Um, we're now back on board with Future F1. I'd say that's about a five, six second gap. Um, no, no, about three, four second gap, sorry, between uh, our Clark and Mikey's pitting early. So maybe he's caught damage or something. This is big news actually for our race leader. Pike and Mikey's pitting eight minutes earlier than the two stop strategy would suggest. So oh, evidently he's probably taking damage at some point, but that means Memto D9 is now going to be in the lead, still on strategy. And uh, looking good to take not only the overall victory for CCR, but also the room victory. As we see Mikey Mikey dropping to fourth now, because of course Pai and Bichu haven't made mistakes. And uh, yeah, we're interesting. Some... So I am just. Uh... I had a little bit of news in my ear and a little technical glitches there with my microphone. But uh, yes, it's interesting to see now. Play is in second place after that early contact with uh, R. Clark where he didn't have to pit. And now we've got a whole new set of drivers looking good for a rune victory, apart from M29, of course. But can Play make it be a bit of an upset here and close down the NSX? We've seen the NSX has been a little bit harsher on its tyres than than the Lotus or the, than the Mazda so far this, this round. So could we see a little bit of a change in the uh, in, in the running order now? Play's been looking quick, he's had the best, some of the best practice time so far. So it's perfectely possible and I think he is closing down on Mento 89. I think Mento's had a mistake there actually. He looked very slow down the short shoot into the hairpin. I think Mento's having to push very hard and I think Play's closing him in and this could be an overtake for the lead. This is very interesting to watch here because, you know, Clay's been a little bit anonymous throughout most of the, uh, the season so far. And uh, Mento's been, you know, there or there about, just had some un unlucky disconnections. We could be seeing more unluckiness for the uh, CCR driver. We got a little bit of a, a wiggle there for Clay. And at the final corner, we come down to jump into, into the first turn. So the, oh, the first of the four hairpins, switch back into the second. Do all that the best traction possible around that corner to fire yourself down towards the short of the second set. This is the hardest one of the hairpins, it just keeps tightening and then you come down through the fourth and as it opens out, you have a mighty uh, outside curve there. And we have hearing reports that Moto did get that damage early on. And we think that's why he's dropping back towards play, but he's, um, he's got some sort of damage on that car and it's affecting it in some way or somehow. Um, we don't know which corner or which, which wheel or if it's something else, but he's definitely got damage. It, doesn't look like, it does look like the car is one second in some way through the high speed corners. And then come back up towards the top of the lap. And through this very difficult final double apex corner. And all play running very wide again. That was very, very uh, close to the edge. 
at the edge of that corner, it goes very off and you can suck straight into the uh, into the barrier there if you get the hitting the uh, your, your breaking arms. It's all very close through the first. Because, oh, that might have been another touch. Mental is definitely suffering with, uh, with, with some sort of damage at some point in the lap that's slowing him down through the... Coming up towards the top of the, the loop again. And again, a bit of a wider line there to play. It gives him a better exit down towards the hill. But uh, it does seem to be losing out to Monty going. In fact, going into the pit. No, he's just bringing it over towards the uh, towards the outside. He's trying to that wide line in to try and deal with the fact that it's caused not so good on the exit. And at the moment, he can't get the power down as early. And then yeah, by looking you know, just being in the wing mirrors, just showing that uh, he's still there, but then to pull the way a little bit this time, I think he was a little bit too aggressive. Um, and the hearing reports is like the Mento will pick in two laps time. Uh, that will be back onto the optimum two-stop strategy. And we'll see what Play can manage to do. If he can convert this into a one-stop, then he should, with the pace he's had, have a very good shot of winning this race. So we're still uh, we're still here live at Iger. We're on board now, lap 27. We are on. It's 26 for racing laps, and again, look how close the little Lotus is behind the uh, the NSX there. And again, out of the corner because he was right up behind him, can get on the power of his early. Memto is using all of his defensive driving skill to hold up that Lotus for as long as possible, despite the damage on the NSX. It was very good driving here. You can just see Bichu in the background of that, uh, that shot. And again, the Lotus right behind him again on braking. And where he goes for it on the exit? No, it's kind of close enough. And again, look, the NSX is just pulling away a little bit down the straight, but now we'll get the slipstream effect. And the Lotus closed back in a little bit. He needs a better run for that final corner, if I'm honest. The other one is really going to get him, or if he gets a very good run out of the top end of the circuit and on the way back down the hill, we might see an overtake here. The Lotus is looking strong again, this is the closest he's been into the top of the hill, but again, in a straight line, he just doesn't have the pace. So, uh, oh, he's going for the dive, he's going for the very late dive, that was a very aggressive move from play. Mentor gave him just enough space to make it doable, but I think that's the job done move made. That was a uh, Impressively late braking there for the little Lotus in comparison to that, that NSX. And that, that's play into the lead for the first time all season on, on pure pace. Great bit of driving from the tour driver. He, he well and truly deserves his uh, position. A great bit of driving. Closed down the, uh, the NSX. And uh, we shall see how this unfolds. We expect Memto in this time around. It's just coming up to the first half an hour. 
We'll be seeing what happens. Oh, a big uh, plume of dust from the uh, the lease and the NSX at different parts of the corner. They're definitely stretching the track as far as possible. Now, let's see what happens here. Will Mem 29 come to the pits this time? Yes, that looks like he's coming in now. Well, here we go. So, Mento is in the pits this time. What we're looking at is we're seeing where is Pikey Mikey, because will Mike come out in front? We expect him to do so. He's only got 20 seconds of the lap left, so he should easily come out in front of Mem 29. Of course, the pit stop here is worth about 55 seconds round here. So it should be easy uh, for Mike to come back through. Should have about 15 seconds advantage, I believe. Uh, it looks like it's going to be Play and Bichu who we'll see him trying to do to do the one stop. Whilst everyone else behind will have to convert to a two stop or a slightly um, off off optimum one stop strategy. There we go. Pokemon is now ahead of Memto. As we see, our race leader Play. Coming back through over the line, it's another good lap time there actually, despite the uh, damage, yeah, the, despite the old tyres, it's still a low minute, uh, one minute two, I'm pretty sure, through there. A great pace there still. As you see, Bitru now in the pits actually, so he's going for the two stop as well, so that puts Mike, Pikey Mikey likely back up into second place. So this is a race between Play and Pikey Mikey with uh, Memto down to 6th actually, wow he's really dropped position so Pikey Mikey must not be far ahead of our Clark, of course Clark now having old tyres though so this is really going to be a, a bit of a fight between uh, between uh, Pikey Mikey and Play depending if Play's got the pace to hold off Mikey on the old tyres he's going to have to make no mistakes pretty much because of course uh, he inherited that lead because of the damage, not, you know, he didn't overtake him before Mikey stopped. So we expect Mike to take the lead again once uh, plays back out on fresh tyres. Um, it's all going to be dependent on how much of a gap can Pikey and Mikey pull um, in relation to the two cars. Because he's going to have to close in on that Lotus a lot and I'm thinking that might be too much for the, uh, the English room to manage as we see Future all over the back of our Clark. This is what I mean, Clark's tyres must now be worn out as... well, they must be very worn out because uh, he's been on those tyres for around 25 laps because of very early on, remember that damage right at the start. And, uh, oh, big wiggle there! Future's Probably not in the best place to try and overtake there. That was a little bit too far to the inside, if I'm honest. Yeah, and he's dropped back through here because, of course, that KTM isn't very good in a straight line. So he has to try and outbreak the Lotus through the corners. He'll close up through this section. Right? It's all about mechanical grip and traction. Um, but uh, as we get to the straight section, so just you know disappear, no, the arc rock that is, will just disappear off into, into, a, into the distance as you can see right now, look at him go, it's got to be around 6 or 7 car lengths he's, he's now up, well before he was about 1, look through this corner alone, you know, yeah, Future is, is gaining 4 car lengths in, in Clark, it's an incredible game just through one corner, just because he's got the traction and Clark doesn't at this point. So as we get to 34 minutes of total time, uh, we've now got Play 117 first, Pikey Mikey second, R Clark in third, and we're on board here with a fourth place man, Future F1. Behind him, and I don't believe it's that far behind him, is Moto89, and behind him is Big UX, and still back down last after that early contact uh, is our uh, uh, old boy. So we're looking at a, a bit of a... Uh, Showing the uh, old boy would want to forget it at this point. It'd be interesting to see where he's on the track at the moment and how many laps he's completed in relation to Pike and Mikey. Of course, those two are fighting for a third place overall in this race. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Old boy is now on lap 32. So it looks like there's probably going to be, you know, 30 seconds between Mikey and Old Boy. So at the moment, he's not really going to pull anything in that gap. So the P24 driver, whilst he's in last on this race, 
should be doing enough for the team that he gets third place overall for them when we get the final standings. Here we are again on board with play. We should be seeing him pit in about nine minutes time. Hopefully he won't uh, come out of the pit lane and put it in the wall. Anyway, it's all the advantage. <coughs> To apologize. All the advantage he would have gained by doing the one stop will be lost, and he'll be on bad and uh, worse tyres than anybody else by the end of the race. So he's got to keep it, you know, keep it very clean, very cool for the next uh, 54 minutes. And we'll be looking forward to seeing how he gets on with that. This is a very interesting bit of strategy. Point to note: so far, if you've been on a one stop strategy, you've won this race so far, and Nicodemus managed it. And uh, uh, Pikey Mikey had to do a converted two-stop, but he was on a one-stop strategy until late uh, late damage uh, forced him into the pits. But uh, in terms of his strategy, he, you know, he was on for a one-stop. He won yesterday, and uh, today Play is looking in a strong position again. You know, so it seems that even if you're uh, uh, even if he'd uh, been I do apologise, I've, I've lost my train of thought. Um, e even it, it seems the, uh, the the drop off in pace isn't high enough for the uh, for the two stop cars to really close. The only person that's strong enough on a two stop really to close in was probably Johnny B. But the, uh, the uh, incidents that uh, he him and Al uh, uh, Glen Owls had um, between two of them cost them both a chance of taking the overall victory. Of course, Glen took pole here in the only qualifying session we have in the weekend. And uh, we know there were some choice words said between the two drivers afterwards, but uh, we'll see what the stewards have to say. And once that vote has been given, that will be the final vote. And we will not look over the, the uh, that again as we're on board now with Future F1, who's still stuck behind our Clark, despite the fact Clark's tyres are far worse at this point. Are we going to see him pit? No, neither car is pitting at this point. Again, you can just see the KTM is so much more planted uh, through the hairpins, and as soon as we get to this straight, bang, the Lotus is pretty much off and gone at this point. So if we come back up through the tunnel again, again, the Lotus just hasn't been close enough for future going to make, a, make a, an attack on and uh, just again as soon as we get to a straight just doesn't have the pace to quite manage to, to close in on him and uh, interesting to see as we come up with a full timing screen here we can see Pikey Mikey's 30 seconds behind play so that means by the time he's pitted um, he'll be about a minute and a half uh, behind him and the gap back to, uh, to Memto uh, is 22 seconds uh, with the with, uh, our clock in the future. But interestingly, for the win, Future F1 needs 15 seconds to take the win from Mem289. Currently, that gap is 11 seconds. So it's it's very close between those two, with them both being on two stop strategies. But of course, Futures is slightly uh, off off optimal because of that damage early on in the race. So can we see if Memto can close him in or will Future be able to hold off and possibly take a victory for INF? This is going to be a really interesting race. You know, it's not all over yet for, uh, for INF. They've got a good shot at uh, possibly taking their first, first victory, which would be absolutely fantastic for them because, of course, they are the highest place um, rookie team for the N24 in the CSS, which means they're going to get first choice what car they want to drive in the N24 after the last of the veteran teams. So that's a really use, a really, really important thing to have is, in, is, is the first choice. And I uh, hope, you know, INF are really hoping that they can take it, um, you know, almost to a point where no one can, uh, um, can, can go. But uh, we have heard uh, that um, <clears throat> the 
LNF team are thinking of moving into the SB7 category, um, which is the lower class, while uh, this, most, of the other, most of the other veteran teams, that is, are going for the, the higher SB9 class, which is based off the GT3 cars. Um, that's just how the N24 cars are um, uh, ca uh, given their categories. It's a bit of a weird, weird uh, numbering system, but um, SB9 is the, is the top class for this. SB7 is the lower class, as we're still on board with that, uh, that KTM. But, uh, with the uh, inclusion of the new driver RCB, we may be seeing INF moving up to uh, the SB9 class. They've been really, you know, building on every race they're doing, getting faster and faster and stronger. So it's very likely we can see them in the uh, in the N24 in the top class, going for the overall win. They've been extremely impressive, and um, you know, they came out of pretty much nowhere, if I'm honest. We didn't really expect to see them doing so well after the first couple of rounds, but they kind of, you know, knuckled down, got the work in, set the car up differently, took some advice from some of the other teams, because no team really wants to see another struggle, we're all here to see competition, and um, they've really kind of pushed on because of it, and it's been a very impressive display from the American team, uh, and currently they're a higher placed um, highest place uh, uh, rookie team so we should be seeing the one stop cars which is basically play and uh, uh, we'll be seeing play pitting soon and our Clark pitting soon of course Clark being on a kind of forced one stop strategy at the moment trying to make his tyres last um, despite his earlier uh, damage and uh, we should be seeing how that goes for the uh, for the Scottish driver, driving for Reaper Racing, of course he had a great, great start, you know, looked really fast, you know, really been on pace all weekend, and a little bit of a rash move, and I think that's really cost the uh, Reaper Racing again, they're you know, not getting much luck, and they've put down the championship, of course there's only two drivers in that team, uh, and neither of them can ever make the Saturday race, so they're never going to be in a strong position. Oh, look how close Future got through there. He's on, on the power though, he just couldn't get it on early enough because of the line he took. And that's uh, in the, uh, pretty much in the dust again. Just every time, just seeing a, a kind of uh, slinky effect here. You know, it's a, it's a Doppler, uh, Doppler, Doppler effect, I believe, actually, is the correct term. Um, as they come out of the corner. Ah, oh, Constantino, I do apologize. Drop the drop is the sound one, I do apologize. Um, that's going to go down as a as a, a bit of a, a howling mistake, but uh, I do believe it's not quite as bad as my co commentators are uh, missing an SX mistake like made last night. So, um, as we're still back on board with Future F1. Uh, this is kind of the closest battle we've got at the moment. Be interesting to see when play comes in where Pike and Mocky comes out in relation to him. But apart from that, at the moment, there's, there's, everything's kind of settled down a little bit. So it'd be interesting to see your views. Get in contact with us uh, with the hashtag CoreCSS on the Core Twitter page. We're also on Facebook. You know, if you're on the live stream, put a comment in. Uh, uh, hopefully, someone will be able to get those to me as soon as possible. Um, but uh, please, yeah, get involved. If you've got any questions and you know, wondering why there's a, you know, I'm talking about overall victories when about someone who's not even close to the lead, I can try and explain that again. Whatever you need to know, you know where these teams are based, I can do my best to give you that information. So yes, that's on the core Twitter page with the, uh, the hashtag C, uh, core CSS, and uh, hopefully I'll have you get in touch. As we're back on board with our Clark in third position, the number 22 car still holding off from the KTM behind after pretty much immense pressure through every corner. He gets a bit of a break on the straights and then bang, straight up behind him again, there's a KTM. So, um, it's not going to be an easy race for our Clark. We should be seeing him pit soon as well, of course. Um, he's on quite old tyres, which is why the uh, KTM's keeping so closely to the back of him. And uh, this is definitely a um, 
going to be an interesting battle for the rest of the race. We've seen more pace out of Clark, but uh, future F1, apart from that, that scuffle he had with Old Boy, has been a little bit more consistent, in my opinion, um, over the race. He's, uh, he was defending that move, while R. Clark's damage was caused by a move that he was attacking on. And, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And plays in the pits! Big news, our race leader is in the pits. He's putting a bang on strategy. So this is this is a completely scheduled pit stop, but it'll be interesting to see where Pikey Mikey comes out. Oh, he comes out in relation to Pikey Mikey. We're expecting him to be about 25 seconds behind uh, Pikey Mikey, but of course Pikey Mikey has to make that pit stop. And at the moment, they look very close on pace. So this is, you know, at the moment, plays race to lose. He's going to have to pretty much put it in the... Uh, in the, in the barriers for Pikey Mikey to be able to close this up. But uh, we haven't seen play in a leading situation since the last year's CSS, really. So, um, you know, mistakes happen. A little bit out of practice from leading a race. You know, as we say, oh, look how close that KTM is. And then we get to a straight, and he can't quite get close enough. And he's going to have to, you know, really be bold. But, um, the cost there is we see, you know, play now moves down to sixth. That just shows how close all the cars are in this race. The only person who couldn't get past him, I don't believe, was Old Boy, which shows just how close they are um, at the moment on track, as we believe. Uh, oh, yeah, Future F1's past him. I do apologize. I was so busy checking where Play's position was, I missed probably an excellent move there from F1. Um, but yes, F1's now up into second position. He probably got him down. Uh, at the bottom half, and I do apologise for missing that. That was on screen, I just completely missed it. Yeah. The unfortunate nature of not having someone on commentary with me is uh, when my eyes are diverted, um, I don't see it. So uh, I do apologise for that mistake. But uh, our clock's obviously just finally run out of a uh, uh, run out of steam on those tyres. We expect him to see him pitting soon. That would be kind of the requirement for him to do to be able to sort of make it to the end at this point with those tyres on him and uh, we, we're hearing that the move was made into turn 7 so this corner here uh, and that was um, yeah just a really good move there for future F1 um, you know he's had enough laps behind him to line him up see where he was strong or weak and got him up the inside but, uh, yeah the cars are down in the 104s at the moment those on older tyres See, Bichu's not far behind Memto 89. Oh, sorry, Memto 89 probably just passed Bichu uh, if they're that way round. So we see uh, Memto's you know, pushing on, trying to get back up into the standings after a um, after his pit stop. Though Memto's had a pretty faultless race so far, apart from. Uh, apart from the damage he took early on with play, I believe. Oh, I'm just hearing no, I'm the wrong way round. It's uh, Bitchu closing back off from Mento. Mento, so, uh, yeah, the fresh tyres on the on the KTM. We're seeing the KTM's on the move, and uh, this race is turning into a bit of a tantalising prospect. Let's hope there's not any contact between the drivers. Uh, we've seen a little bit, but not quite as much as yesterday. It's been a bit cleaner overall, and, um, It'll be interesting to see. You know, we, I said earlier on that Team Morphine hadn't really shown a, uh, a great uh, a great amount in terms of, of, of appearances. They've just been there or thereabouts, but not quite up in the headline spots. Uh, they've been driving well. He's consistently about half a second faster than the than, than Memto at the moment. You know, the fastest man of all at the moment on track seems to be Bichu, yes, followed by Future. And R Clark is now into the pit lane. Which is what we expected at this point. Uh, we'll see Memto and uh, uh, Bichu coming through soon. There we are right now. And uh, that will be Clark back down to fifth because he's now going to have the freshest tyres of anybody on the track at the moment. He doesn't have to pit it. He's now going to the end on this set of tyres. It's going to be interesting uh, how far ahead play is going to be of him. We expect him to be a little bit ahead because uh, our Clark hasn't even made his pit stall yet. And, uh, uh, the plays at full racing speed just going through the hairpins, so we expect him to drop fairly down, you know, far down the order. Yeah, so he's now sixth. Uh, and he's actually dropped to last now. Old Boy's now close enough that uh, Clark is in the 
uh, at the very back of the, the field, and you see Bitchu's past Memto, that was off camera. Um, so we expect that's probably where uh, Future did it as well. well. Turn 7, it seems to be a very strong corner for the KTM. And uh, look at this for a bit of a topsy-turvy race. We've got people all over the place. We don't know who's going to end up in first at the moment. We've got Mento, uh, Mikey back in first, but of course he's got a pit again. So the first man who hasn't got a pit, I believe, is play, um, based on strategy. Um, you know, Future's going to come in soon because he pitted early, so he'll be uh, coming in soon. Pikey Mikey will probably be coming in the next five minutes to try and square off his stint a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're going to be seeing some really interesting uh, strategy calls soon. Now, the car's on fairly evenly based tyres, but the gap's been different because of the number of pit stops they've made. The only man who's had a pretty much uh, perfect race is play. So we're expecting him to come out of this in first by around 30 seconds ahead of Mikey. Um, but of course Mikey's had that d had to force himself onto a second pit stop. I heard in my ear that uh, he made a mistake at the exit of turn 7 uh, up towards the tunnel. And uh, looking at the current relative paces, <coughs> see his future's closing in on him. So, uh, uh, Mike's tyres are... I'm not sure how old they are in comparison to Futures. Uh, I thought they'd be a little bit newer actually, so um, Futures are on a storming pace at the moment and he's really been closed down, so um, also looking at it, Play has got 40 seconds um, behind, so if Pikey and Future pit now it's going to be very close, very tight on the time, because of course these pit stops are as fast as they can be. I've been hearing that they're up to about 50 seconds, but if they're only 40 seconds, they'll be very close. But of course every lap that they do um, after this, uh, pl uh, play is closing in on them because he's just pitted. So um, yeah, it's going to be very close um, in that final stint to see what happens. It's going to be kind of and we, we can see it closing. It's all about how much they uh, how much they they close in. We see Pichu's in still in the one o twos. Futures in just into the one o three. It seems to be Mikey at the moment has really dropped off the pace. Um, so I, I think Mikey might have either a little bit of damage again, or, or is kind of just resigning himself to not quite being quick enough. Oh, was that bitter in the wall, or was that just a very wide exit? It was hard to tell. But at the moment, it's Mazda, KTM, KTM, NSX, Lotus, NSX, Lotus. So we're seeing a little mix of, uh, of cars as well in, in the top three, but uh, right behind Bitcher, of course, is Memto. So this is going to be a hell of a race to see who ends up near the front. I mean, I, I, I'm not 100% sure who's going to end up where. It's, it's actually quite quite exciting to see how this is all happening and uh, how this is all unfolding. This is uh, impressive. Uh, driver from all the drivers, we can see Pikey Mikey's probably just been unlapped there by our Clark uh, again. So um, after his pit stop, Clark, he probably dropped that lap. He's now closing back in on the back of Old Boy, who's lapping about two seconds slower than Clark is at this point in the race. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds as Old Boy now hits, which is what we expect to see him do because his tyres are quite worn after that early incident. So uh, this will drop him back behind our Clark, who will be back in last. Um, so the next man we believe to pit will either be Pikey Mikey or Future and then it will be interesting to see how that all unfolds soon. So we're watching Old Boy's pit stop right now. That was a very short stop. Of course the car's not leaving much in the way of fuel at the moment. So yeah, he's dropped to the back now. Our clock going through, and we're back on board with our race leader, Pikey Mikey. 
uh, who doesn't have much of a gap between him and a uh, hey, future. The next car behind him is future. And uh, you know he's closing in on that gap. I'm pretty sure they're going to be pitting at similar times, so this could be a real fight for what I think will be second place overall. And uh, he's closing in on him, so this will be interesting to see how this this unfolds over the next 34 minutes. We've got less than 35 minutes of the race remaining, and uh, we're on that. 52 with our leader uh, leaders here, and uh, it's definitely turning out to be a bit of a, uh, a strategy and, and an intelligence race here instead of a, a kind of touring car style bash them off the roads type tra uh, race. This is really one for the uh, for the number crunches to to to, to work out. But uh, it's been a fascinating race so far, really showing how different strategies work out, and of course. All very important to work out for the N24 happening uh, from February the 28th to March the, uh, March the 2nd, that weekend, 2015. Put it down in your diary. Should be a good one. We'll have hopefully uninterrupted coverage of, uh, of the race. Uh, with commentary all the way through. Oh, big wheel there from M29 as I interrupt my uh, little bit of advertising. And, uh, Definitely a, a wiggle there from Emto. I think he's got damage again in that car. He's, bit of, he's kind of had a bit of a uh, a bad second half of the race, but um, he's done a good job overall. The uh, the, the commentary based driver, you know, team leader for CCR, defending champions. He knows what he's doing. So maybe that car is a little bit too aggressive for, the, for a longer stint. It's been looking good over the short stint, but. Uh, Definitely been a little bit, um, a little bit slidey at the tail. That NSX, it's not really been planted, which is a. Uh, I mean, it's normally how Mento likes his cars—a little bit twitchy at the back, um, and control it with his right foot. He's an aggressive driver. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Again, very wide into that corner, trying to get maximum use of the road, but of course, it's not far off hitting the dirt, and that could be. Um, Quite dangerous on the way in, as we see Mikey in the pits and features stayed out, stayed out. So he's now going to try and go for the overcut on uh, on Mikey. Mikey having to pit for the undercut, but he's managed to square down some of the time that he uh, he had to spend uh, on this stint. He's going to he's going to shorten his stint as much as possible. He's managed to cut six minutes off of his final stint compared to his uh, his middle stint, which will be very handy for him on tyre usage. Shot down to fitter. He has crucially come out behind play. Now, how far behind play is the really important thing to work out here. Um, this is the uh, this is an important thing to work out here. The future should be putting soon. Mike is now exiting the pit lane. Will he come out in front of Clark? I don't think he's going to come out in front of Clark. I think Clark's going to have him here, actually. This is going to be really close between the two cars. There goes Clark. He's through on Mikey. So now Mikey's down behind the Lotus. Now, Clark's pitted, I believe, for the second time. Yes, so that's, that's full, you know, position on the track. So... Clark putting in the really quick laps. You can see he's done 101s. No one else has been into that sort of pace so far, apart from Clay. So they're really, really showing the pace at the moment, the Lotuses. Mike is 24 seconds behind Clay, which I don't think he can make up. Future's now in the pits, and uh, also lost lost um, out to Play, and will probably lose out to, well, will lose out to R. Clark as well, because he was behind Mike. So at the moment it's looking like it's going to be Play, Clark, Mike, Future, Bitu, Mento, Old Boy. I think will be the order once the final pit stops have gone round, but I might be incorrect. Um, we'll see how that unfolds, but that's my prediction at the moment. Future drops behind Mike, just. And it's going to be very close between all the cars. I'm expecting Bitu will be the next man to pit, him or Mento, one of the two.
Yep, Memto in now. So it'll be Bichu after that, and then we'll be all pitted. And it looks like Play is going to be the man with the driving seat. He's got about 18 seconds, but Play's. Ch I'm just hearing words that uh, Play's got an incident. And uh, let's see. Doesn't look like the car's got damage. Seems okay. But, um, has he has he hit a wall somewhere or something? Yeah, I'm hearing words that he had a half spin into the uh, into the final corner. It looks like he got away with that without damage, because the car seems to still be going just as fast. But I have to check the sector time to see if he was down at all. As we see, Mento is still in the pit lane. This is just shows you how much time you lose from making that extra pit stop. But um, Bitch is now in the pits as well, so it's going to be play, Clark. Mikey Mikey, Future, Mento, Bichu, I believe, will be our f running order. Um, so, I mean, that's not going to upset many of the drivers here. It's really, for the win, it's going to be between Future and Mento. And at the moment, Future's got that in the hand. He's got 20 seconds on Mento. Um, really shown some great pace. Uh, which is going to give him a lead of about seven seconds before any uh, inf um, stewards' uh, verdicts, which is great news for the new team. Um, old boy, I'm not quite sure where he is on track at the moment in relation to Pikey Mikey for third position on the podium. Um, as we see, Future's in fourth now. Bitchu should come out behind Memto, though I'm not 100% sure when Memto is on track. Uh, oh, he's just coming through the, uh, the final hairpin, so he'll come out just behind, I believe. Oh no, he's coming through there, so Bichu will, will, will stay ahead of Memto, as he was before the pits. Memto couldn't make the undercut work, so it's Play, Clark, Mikey, Future, Bichu, Memto, Old Boy at the moment. And uh, just to sum up my point before, Old Boy's lost to lap to uh, Pikey Mikey, which isn't enough for Mikey to be able to, to pull that in. It's going to require uh, a little bit more bad luck for old boy. Um, but uh, Mike's, Mike's driven well tonight. That will be a good, you know, no more he could really do. But he made a little mistake again. It's a good drive from the M4R driver. And a recovery drive after what was a terrible start to the weekend. As we see, Mento was... Oh, that's Mento in the wall! That's definitely bad. That was a... Uh, got tail tail happy into the corner and that's pretty much sealed and dealed I'm pretty sure the uh, the win there for future that was very slidey on the way in and there you go look the car is all over the place that's going to be more time lost for Memto surely he's going to have to pit and that's going to drop him to the very back of the field I believe I don't know I need more information on it to know for certain but wow that was very uncharacteristic error from our from from Memto there. So I uh, just have to uh, refresh myself a little bit. But um, we have to see how the damage goes. It all depends on how much time he feels he's losing from the damage and how unstable the car is. Um, Looking at Play's car, it looks like the game is saying that he's got a little bit of damage on the front, but we can't trust that much. And just looking at the kicking on those front wheels, I believe uh, the game is a little bit li it lies about that quite often. But um, just as a visual cue, just don't 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 uh, take too much out of that. As we see Play coming up towards that final, as Clark is probably around 10 seconds behind him. And Mike is probably around another four behind Clark, so it's very close between the top three. Yeah, there we go, there's Mike right behind him. We've seen Mike now into the 101s as well. Not quite as far into them as Clark was, but still good pace there for the... Uh, um, for, for the, for the uh, Mazda driver. He's trying to close back in on Clark, and this could be a really interesting three-way fight. Because Plane's got the oldest tyres. Then Clark then Mike, so it's going to be really interesting to see how these uh, these drivers go in the final 20 minutes. Can Mike close that back in on fresh tyres? He's going to have to be pretty much perfect for the entire race 
uh, from now on and not lose too much time behind our clock. So um, it's all about how much time will we gain on the on the, the two lotuses in front, but at the moment it's Lotus, Lotus, Mazda, KTM, KTM, NSX, NSX. So it's been a really bad day actually for the uh, the NSXs after what looked like was going to be a great start to the weekend. They kind of dropped back further and further as the races have gone. So um, yeah, there'll be some scratching of heads at the Acura uh, Acura factory and the. Uh, at the team shops, they'll be working out how to uh, improve on, on, on their uh, performances next time round at Matterhorn, our series finale where we'll be having two hour long races each time. And uh, be interested to see how those turn out. Uh, the championship is still tight, even though Mento, uh, uh, sorry, M4R has a, uh, a little bit of a lead. They'll lose a bit of that this time round because they'll be off the podium, we believe. But um, yeah, it's. You see Memto coming down over here. The car seems to be a little bit more stable. He's kind of balancing out his driving based upon the damage now, which is a real skill of Memto. You've seen him do it many times before. He's got a little bit of damage, but he can still generate the lap time required. It's a skill uh, which really, really puts him in good stead for it to be in 24 instead of having to pit or losing the time. But again, a little bit of a wiggle through the final part. The car's very unstable at the rear. Old boy isn't far behind there. If old boy starts thinking he can catch Mento, possibly we're going to have a race on our hands. I mean, old boy's flapping pretty quickly now, probably quicker than Mento was, no, it is now. So we could have a fight all the way through the field here between, you know, the top three are definitely within fighting range. And after that, it's very close between the top. Uh, the, the bottom two look very close as well, it's only six seconds. Last time round, Mikey took four tenths out of uh, out of our clock, so it's definitely getting closer between those two. It's down to 1.8 seconds now between the two drivers, 1.5 I believe. Uh, actually, the last split. Mikey Mikey last time said his fastest final sector and um, plays down to the 103s and the other two are still in the 102s. They were pretty much identical in lap time, uh, Clark and Mikey, last time round. So they're both closing on play with around 20 minutes left and only six seconds. They're going to catch him, and that's going to be very interesting to see because if we have a, uh, if we have a three way fight, who's going to go for it? Who's going to hang back? But if I was I was Mike, I'd hang back about a second behind and wait for the other two to, uh, to get too aggressive and try and gain it that way. Instead of having to get past Clark and Bonnie, try and get past them both in one go. Instead of, um, instead of having to worry about uh, having to do them you know, one, one after another, let them take each other out and, uh, and gain that way. Um, or, you know that the two guys in front of him it's not important in terms of the overall standing. This is all just for a kind of pride from this coming on. And uh, he can just sit there in third and be, you know, happy with his work. He really depends. Definitely gaining a little bit. Clark is, uh, is losing, losing time slowly over the stint, but it's not a lot. You know that that Lotus is a little bit lighter on its, on its front tires than the Mazda. It's a little bit harder on its rear tires just because it's mid-engine. Um, it weighs a little bit more than the uh, than the Mazda does. And, um, you know the front left is the most worn tire here, and uh, therefore we're seeing uh, a lot of. Front wear on the FR cars at the moment. You know, the Mazda is, is a little bit too harsh on its front left tire. Yes, you see. Here's, here's an interesting fact I've just been told. This is the closest race of the weekend. All the cars are still on the lead lap. Um, just. They're all boys right at the end of it now. Um, and Mento, with a 
to kind of stretch themselves out a little bit. But all cars are still on the lead, lead lap, which is incredible after an hour and ten minutes of this race. We've seen, you know, everyone's made massive errors, or at least everyone's made small errors. So, um, apart from play, and obviously it shows that uh, those have pace, the others haven't fallen up enough to, uh, to give them a massive lead, despite they can use in the lead around six seconds. And uh, I wonder if we'll have a, a closer finish than we had yesterday. Or, uh, we have days. Again, Clark's been very um, fast and loose there with the dust. It's going to be interesting to see if that starts to uh, damage his chances of protecting his tyres. We'll possibly have a, you know, a spin against him and leave some uh, some rock on the car as he comes over and uh, just lose the rear tyres a little bit. And, uh, again, might be a little bit closer this time. Uh, Clark's having to push quite hard. But all this time, I believe the two cars should be closing in on play. It'll be interesting to see if we can get another little view at the, uh, this, the time of the screen. To see if they've closed in at all. Yeah, so the gap's down to four seconds now. So, you know, they are closing. It's not massive. Play's sped up a little bit. Um, the gap between Mike and Clark is down to 1.2 seconds. Um, we can have an almost identical fastest lap as well, and an almost identical last lap. So I believe Mike is trying to push Clark um, towards play so that they have a three-way fight for the lead. I believe is the, the idea there, um, which makes sense. You know, last time around, Clark pulled a tenth back actually, but they both closed uh, about seven, six, seven tenths in the in our leader, so this is going to be very close between the two cars. There, uh, there you can see the uh, the chrome lotus at the bottom of the hill while they're halfway down. So yeah, it's getting closer. Paul's going to have to step it up if he can. But he's on those old tyres. And, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do. Remember, the man with the freshest tyres at the moment is Mike. And then Clark, and then Play. Play's on the only man making a one-stop strategy this time because of the uh, damage and all of that to the other cars. I believe this is our closest top three we've had in the entire series as well, actually, at this point in the race. Again, they've closed a little bit again on that. On, on play, and with uh, 17 minutes left, it's going to be very close. I'm hearing my ear, it might have been Deep Forest 1, which was actually closer than this. The first round of uh, the first race of the second round might have been a bit closer than this, but uh, it's very close between the three cars. It'll be very interesting to see uh, how they all end up. I'm starting to get you know, a little bit of goosebumps. Adrenaline started to kick as we close down for the final few uh, laps of the, well, not a few, but the final probably 15 laps of the race. You know, all the cars are now on low fuel. Drivers are getting a little bit tired. Are we going to see a really big accident or a really incredible fight for the win? I know which one I want to have. Um, I think all the drivers deserve it. They've all driven brilliantly today. I don't know who uh, who deserves the uh, the driver of the day more. So we'll see at the end of the fight. I think. I think the, I think the, uh, the driver who comes out best out of the three of these is going to have to deserve it. And uh, I think that's what my ruling is going to be, unless one of them has a has a bit of a crash and, and takes the other one off. I believe. That would be my ruling. Whoever wins this race is going to take driver of the day, in my opinion. Mike is still right behind Clark. The MX-5 is one of the best in the straight line, actually. He's right up behind him now, through that one. He might be setting him up in the next two laps or so. This is definitely the closest I've seen him for a long, you know, 
Oh, all right. So they're closing in on, on Bay as well, so is it worth you know waiting? Maybe for the tyres of the cars in front to uh, to wear down even more. And uh, getting them when they're on almost, you know, barely usable gravel maybe, I don't know. It's going to be all playing through Mike's, Mike's mind at this moment. He's the man in the, uh, in the driving seat when it comes to the tyres, but plays in the, the man in terms of the position. He has track position, and as uh, David Cooper often says in the F1 uh, commentary, track position is key. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're the man in front, you uh, you have got the uh, the choice of your line as long as the other person isn't absolutely wants to side you into the corner. But you know, every lap you can see it's visually getting smaller the gap to play. And uh, he's gonna have to be, you know, wary of that fact. He knows that they're closing in. He's having to think what weapons does he have available to him? What can he use? How can he stop these two cars passing and denying him? It could be an absolutely fantastic first win for the taller team. It's not like you can go and put on a new set of boots and, uh, and gain the time back. At this point in the race, there's only 13 minutes left. He's kind of have to hold on. And uh, that's the first time I've seen the uh, the flag come up for, uh, for for play there. You just saw his name tag come up. So, you know, it's really is getting close. We're now on board looking back from play's car. You can just see the cars are really close together. This is, you know... Wow, this is going to this is gonna be really close, I think. Over the next four laps, we should see Clark close up right to the back of our car. And uh, we should start seeing this three-way fight turning up. And of course, right behind him is Mike. So it's going to be so close. And it uh, be interesting to see how the cars are doing in their relative lap times at the moment. But I'm thinking, again, it's probably six or seven tenths they're pulling or in play every time just closing in, I mean you can see how close the cars are now actually, there's no point even looking at it, you know that is visually much closer this time round, Clark's got to be thinking about seeing at the move and is Mike going to, you know, hold out or be aggressive himself, I mean, I don't know what I'd do in this position, probably sit and wait and see what happens because you've got nothing to lose, really by waiting, they're not in a fight for the overall victory or you know, can't really challenge um, in the overall victory uh, or, or taking away uh, M4L's space in fourth position at the moment. But those cars are so close together, with only 12 minutes left. I don't know who is going to have this, but that's quite off, that's quite off, that's quite off, and taking Mike with him. And, and Clark's in the wall as well, we've been locked up on the back I think, actually. That's all three cars with a little bit of damage, and Mike's got a big. Squirrel on into that corner, into that corner over the jump. So they've all got damage of some sort. Is Clark the one with the least amount of damage? I'm not sure. But um, wow, that that just went wrong. Clay just over overestimated the amount of grip he had left. Slid off the track, came back on in the path of the others, and uh, Clark, we think, didn't get any damage from the contact, but he might have run wide. And now Future's right behind Clay, so. You know, this has turned into a really kind of different sort of battle, but we think Clark is the man with the least amount of damage. We think Clay's got massive amounts of damage, as we can see Futures just breezed past him, and we think Mike's got some damage. So, it all depends now. How, f I mean, they haven't dropped, he hasn't dropped far off the back of Clark. So maybe he got away with it, maybe Clark did damage, I don't know, it's just about a time left, it's not worth pitting unless you're really going to uh, be in trouble, you know, with the rest of the thing. I think Clark might have this now, um, which which would be a fantastic recovery drive for the, uh, for the Scottish driver, but of course it's a little bit of a, a futile effort for the... Uh, the uh, the the racing team because of course there's only two of them so they can't really win overall but it's a good room victory to see and uh, this will be his second room victory I believe as he won deep first three I believe uh, and I do think yeah he's pulling away from Mike so he's definitely got less damage I believe than the uh, the Mazda driver if if any damage at all.
Well, I have to see. I mean, Clark, I think, clicked the wall at some point in the, uh, in the lap. But, of course, Future's now closing in, so maybe Future can deny all of them of a race victory. He's definitely got the best tyres um, of them all. He didn't take any damage in that and closed up. So, you know, maybe Future can come out of nowhere. He's now set the fastest lap of the race. Has Future played an absolute blinder and, and snuck up on us like Sneaker Demis did in the first race and be the sneaky man who goes on to win this race? I mean, he's closing in on the gap. I don't know who's got this who's got this now. I mean, Clark's definitely pulling away from Mike. We know that much because Mike took the most damage out of, out of those two. Future's clear of damage and Clark, we think, is pretty much clear of damage. So, I think this is going to go... Probably the way of Clark with Future in second and Mike in third, um, just because Mike's got that damage. So um, yeah, a bit of an anticlimax uh, again, really. There's just it seems the drivers get a little too excited and someone makes a mistake and it kind of spoils uh, any chance of a three-way battle. Um, but then all Mike's back through on Clark actually. So you know where 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 did that happen? That that seems like there's damage on the the, the Lotus now. So. I mean, this has got to be Futures to, to, to lose now, unless unless Clark bends it into the wall and takes Future with him. I mean, you can see on that car, there's a part that looks weird, and usually that isn't right, but that wasn't like that before we hit the wall, and that car is fish tailing all over the place. He's forcing the issue. That was that was aggressive on, on the uh, part of the KTM. Is Clark going to be even more aggressive back? Go around the outside of that corner. Really? Oh, that was that was the right thing to do at that point. Uh, you know, Mike's come out of this on top at the moment, but there's still eight minutes to go. He's got a damaged car. Future hasn't got a damaged car. I mean, how is he going to defend this? From, you know, this is going to be a, a defence and a half to manage this. Future F1 will know unless he really, really makes a big mistake is going to take this victory overall for INF, which would be a fantastic uh, result for them. But you can see he wants glory. He wants he wants that that that, that room victory as well. He's got the pace on, on Mike because he's got an undamaged car. So this is going to be... Um, yeah, I mean, Future's all over the place. You know, Mike's got no real weapons himself now because he's got a damaged car. The only thing he's got in his advantage is he's got a better car in a straight line. But uh, and you think only front wheel damage, I think, is the only thing that car's got. Um, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see. I am betting you that uh, the CCR boys are sending notes over to the M4R pit wall telling them to slow that, that KTM down as much as possible to give them the real victory back, yeah, the overall victory back. But uh, of course, Mike is here to drive for the M4R boys and, and just try and see what he can do. He's not going to take any favours from anybody. And uh, there's going to be, you know... Oh, oh that was a... Uh, that was close as well. Future is a very aggressive driver there, we can see. The INF boys have been aggressive actually all week. We saw uh, RCB the same. He's trying the inside. I think he caught the wall there possibly. He got a much better exit. But again, look, Mike's going to now pull away that Mazda, which has been set up to be good enough in a straight line to be, you know, be able to defend from the uh, other cars through this high speed section. But again, look, Future's got the balance, he's got the grip. And he's, he's going to try and force the issue at, again. I don't think you can overtake through there. And oh, damage! That's got to be contact. That was, you know, that was pushing him out of the way. You know, that's got to be considered a bit of a rude overtake from uh, from Future. Um, I wouldn't call out the cleanest of moves, um, but he is through. Um, I guess no one took any damage from that, but that, that definitely was a. A little over aggressive, that wasn't really a clean move. The kind of touring card him out of the way, do with the Jason Plato through there. So um, he might get a bit of a slap on the wrist for that one, but um, he's got the position, he's got the place, he's up to first. You know, INF have driven brilliantly this weekend as a team, their new driver as well. Um, so yeah, it'll be good to see 
uh, a different winner, of course. The only the only team who so far have beaten them for all is this new coming American team out of nowhere. So uh, they've done very well with five minutes left. You just just got to keep it on the black stuff, keep it going, and uh, it's uh, the only the only team to overall going to win over M4R this weekend. Um, you know, first time in the championship, we're going to have a different overall winner. We've had three different teams winning uh, races this weekend, just to show you just how different uh, uh, the pace has been between all the teams. You know, they've been so close. Uh, we've had two Mazdas win, and uh, now it looks like we're going to have a KTM, unless something drastically changes in the last few seconds. I will admit, Mike isn't far behind, he's still pushing him, he's still trying to, you know, stay close enough to uh, force him to a mistake, but it does seem that that KDM just has more pace, uh, massively, uh, so, because he's got no damage. Yeah, it features in the 1 minute 2s, and all the other people closer in the 104s now so it's definitely showing that uh, Future's got the pace over the rest of them but um yeah it was, it was a bit of a shame anticlimactic battle I guess in a way you know it wasn't the cleanest of moves but it got the job done I guess we'll see if he gets a slap on the wrist from the uh from the stewards but uh in terms of you know driving ability to skill drove brilliant to get back um, okay. uh, he had an early incident as well with GTP Old Boy, and you know, Future's in lead, Old Boy's in last, so it shows that he's really driven hard to get back, though they had an incident at exactly the same time. I mean, I guess, I guess, yeah, it was a great move, but it looks like Mike's actually really slipping back into the clutches of, uh, of Clark there, or, or the, uh, Gap seems to be just changing a little bit in a different way, but I, I believe Mike's in a uh, in a different uh, in a in a bad way at this point on his tyres. I'm just getting a question in there from a uh, 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 Sebastian Plotnik uh, asking what happened to Old Boy um, earlier on in the race. There was a uh, the Old Boy tried to affect a pass on Future um, through the final sector of the lap. Uh, they went too wide into the final corner uh, with Old Boy on the inside. Um, Old Boy uh, understeered up the track because it broke a little too late, I believe, uh, and tagged Future. They both then um, hit, well, they uh, tagged him quite hard, which put Future in the wall as well. They then both pitted, and Old Boy lost it into the pit lane, um, so lost more time that way. Um, I believe that is what happened in that incident. He was, uh, he was looking at that point, that old boy was on to a decent enough. Oh, is that Clark? Oh, no, yeah, he got away with that just. He lost a bit of time there to pump and Mikey again. And with less than uh, with about two laps left of this race, can Clark close him down? Um, he won't quite manage to make it back past him. Um, we'll have to look out to see, make sure Future isn't making any mistakes. He's going to have to be uh, being careful there, not to uh, throw away all his hard work. But uh, yeah, this is kind of the final battle between uh, between the two cars we thought we were going to be fighting. You know? um, we didn't expect Future to be that close, but with the damage that was sustained, it kind of brought him right back into the race. Just ahead of Clark. It's kind of been the story of this race, even though we've been on different laps at points. And we're coming down fire for the second to last time. And it's definitely closed up on this lap, so that's you know, this is the final lap we're gonna see now. I believe. Uh, Mike was very wide through that corner, that's closed up. A lot of that gap, I think Clark might have a go into the, into the hairpin. And at the bottom of the hill, 
Mike's tyres definitely seem to have gone off the cliff at this point. That damage on the front, I think, has worn already what was going to be the weakness for the Mazda. But uh, it looks like Clark's a little bit too far back to affect a pass into the hairpin. Is he going to try and get a better run? This is our final lap. This is really rather close for the, uh, the second position. Clark's got a better run. Has he hit the wall? I think he might have hit the wall there. He seemed to be very close to it. He doesn't seem to have a run at all. I think he's caught the wall. He's gone too hard into that final corner. He's dropped back a lot. As we're now back on board for future F1, who's, you know, come out of nowhere. Got his first win. Great style, great drive, an aggressive drive, but a well deserved victory. We cut back quickly to Pikey Mikey to take second. A good enough display, I think. Couldn't quite get him to get the. Uh, the yeah, Emperor our car back into third overall, but uh, managed to put it back. Our clock, disappointing start, good end, play, made a mistake on his own volition, just holds up and bit you, but he'll be kicking himself after throwing away what could have been on the podium. And, uh, bit you, kind of good drive, best drive I've seen out of INF. Mentor 89, old boy, the NSXs just seem to have a bad race today. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bad race there. Uh, 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 for the, the NSXs, I do apologise, I just called Bitchy the INF driver, I mean, the Team Morphin driver, the TMR. Uh, they've got exactly the same car colours um, because you can't paint that KTM. So it's quite easy, it's easy for us to make a mistake when you're looking at the car, even if you're saying the name, I do apologise for that mistake. So overall, Future F1 for Inferno Racing takes the win from Pikey Mikey for Maple Racing, R Club for Reaper Racing takes third position, fourth place, uh, just is play uh, for Team Octane Racing, fifth position uh, is Bitchu X for Team Morphine, sixth position goes to Mentor89 and 7th position goes to GTPL Old Boy for Polo 24 Racing. My name is Ethan Dixon, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the race uh, and I shall speak to you all soon. Goodbye.